On my way to the morning ride, right before work, we're gonna ride some e-bikes, do some tests. Let's go. We got them all fully charged. This one's a 36 volt, 250 watt motor, and it's uh, charged up to 42 volts. And this one is a 48 volt, so the batteries charge up to 54 volts. Uh, we'll see how they do. We'll go on a quick uh, 30 minute ride. It's off. So this trail here, used to be a trail, now it's a parking lot. We're off of the old Fry's Electronics. If you live in the South Bay, you would know. But uh, they got an interesting little entryway now. Let's see if it turns into a trail. Ah, uh, those motherfuckers blocked it off. So usually we could ride through this, but there's like a cunt guy back there and he won't let us through. Apparently they're doing some kind of construction here. Um, ruining this perfectly good uh trail turn it into this fucking parking lot for the shopping center here comes you know. the other snitch. <laughs> typical oh oh here comes oh there's another snitch over here he's about to kick us out but yeah, there he is got snitch on the left snitch on the right <laughs> anyways we'll make a quick video about these bikes before these fools pull up how, how do you go about building a bike like this so i built two of them here and uh wait what's going on this is the trail, right? Will be, yes. Is it a trail now? It is on the other side of the bridge. You have to use 33rd Street. 33rd Street? All right. We can't just hang out here and make a video? Sorry. We're making a video. I'll call security. Yeah, we got to roll. Yeah. All right. We'll take off. All right. We made it to the other side of the trail. Shortly after that dude kicked us out, we had to go around. But anyways, <laughs> it looks nicer here. I think our video will do better here anyway. What do you think, Zach? Zach's mad. Place is any. Zach's mad because we're outlaws today. <laughs> okay, so the whole point of this video is, uh, you know, to compare lightweight mid-drive and hub-drive builds. Um, you know, there's a lot of DIY e-bikers out there that are building bikes but none of their bikes have uh what i consider to be a lightweight build this one on the other hand weighs maybe 29 pounds and uh this hub drive bike here weighs maybe 28 pounds maybe a pound lighter um so if you did want to build a lightweight bike what are your options um the first option is definitely going to be the tongsheng motor and this motor here is substantially lighter than a uh, Bafang BBS HD. It just came out about eight, nine months ago. It's super light. You can change the sprocket out for a narrow wide sprocket like this for better chain retention. Um, if you get a big drivetrain gear ratio like this, uh, this one's 1142, you'll be able to climb basically any hill. The motor has 100 newton meters of power, which Bafang BBS HD has 150 and Bosch has maybe 65 newton meters of power so substantially more powerful than the Bosch it's only about four or five hundred bucks brand new um we have a temporary battery situation here there's a 10 amp hour 48 volt battery in this bag um until we figure out a better mounting position for that battery or for or you know find a better battery altogether but uh yeah, this bike is a pretty pretty neat. This is a Batch Bicycles Urban. It's a $650 bike that you can just buy right out of the box and slap this motor on. So you can have a complete build for about $1,400, $1,500, give or take. And uh, you'll have uh, a torque sensor mid-drive bike. Why is that important? Because it has a torque sensor. So it's going to sense your power input and amplify it. And that's great for power efficiency. If you look at my battery here on this Tongsheng kit, we're at, we've ridden about 10 miles and it's still got full battery. Um, where this other kit um, is a 250 watt hub motor that 
we took off of a hyper bike from Walmart, but you can get those on eBay for about 200 bucks complete with the wheel. Um, and uh, this is the one I went with because any other motor with more power, 350 watts or higher, that is hub drive is super heavy. So if you want it to be light, you've got to go with the 250, unfortunately. So this motor combined with this K2 controller and display kit, which is really cool because it's so small um fits inside this bag and this is a 36 volt battery so when we left the shop we were riding these bikes and this one was charged up to 54 volts this one was charged up to 42 volts because it's a 36 volt bike so when we get back we'll see uh what kind of battery we have i'm thinking i'm thinking they'll have pretty good battery right they, they, they should have a lot of range i would think yeah because of the weight so this bike has one missing bar. So that's not too bad. Not at all. That's not too bad. I mean, you know. To your comment on the weight though. Yeah. Rick, if you'll remember, we weighed this bike with all equipment, the full battery, everything. It was, I believe 40 or 41 pounds. Oh, really? Compared to my fully equipped regular road bike though, that's not that bad, see? I'm yeah, you can pick these up as a, it feels like a regular bike. It's as close as you can get to, to I think, a natural feeling bike, right? Now, what are the other it's downsides? It's no different from my regular bike, maneuvering right. in traffic. So let's talk about the downside of, uh, of the hub motor here on this bike. It's going to be the torque going up the hill, right? You said you, you, know, you had to do a little bit of pushing up the hill on the, on the hub motor, right? A little bit. I was also pushing the pace as hard as I could. You yeah, yeah. So, so that's one thing. The second thing would be that this bike uses a cadence sensor, Correct. right? So <clears throat> cadence sensor on this bike means that if you pedal, it only senses that your feet are rotating, but it doesn't sense the pressure you put on that pedal. So the power output of the motor is going to be linear and it's going to be less efficient. Yeah. That so. and there is a delay to the onset of power as you accelerate from a traffic state. Right. There's going to be a delay. It's not going to be instant. This one, you can just push down on the pedal. It goes. This one, it has to give it a few rotations before the sensor can tell that you're going, right? Uh, so that's one thing. You can also ghost pedal on this bike, which is to pedal but put no effort. And that'll, that'll make the bike go as if you're using throttle. So let's talk about throttle for a second because this uh, Tongsheng kit comes with a throttle. And so does this one. Go ahead and give us a little throttle so we can see how it goes. So I like the sound of this bike motor, right? It's hardly very, a sound at all. Hardly a sound at all, just a tiny little buzz. Um, and uh, so when you hit the throttle, you said you get capped at about 20 miles an hour, right? That's right. And, uh, and so then if you pedal, then you can go f further, right, uh, on, right. on speed. It does seem to uh, maintain a power input right. beyond 20 if you are pedaling. And this bike doesn't seem to have um any limit to pedaling or throttling so i'll go ahead and uh if you can do me the honors of picking up the rear wheel so we can hear this motor kind of compare noise just you know some people care about what the bike sounds like so go ahead and pick up the rear wheel i'm gonna hit the throttle so i want to say this motor is louder by a little bit right slightly it also has a lot more mechanical components right so there's a little more noise to that. Still not bad. Not Nothing fair. compared to my motorcycle. No. So that's that's a noise compar comparison for you guys. Now, yeah, pick. go ahead and pick that bike up. What do you think about the weight compared to the other one? The same, if not slightly less. It's about the same, yeah. yeah. It feels about the same. I noticed no real difference. Yeah, about the same. So, yeah, this is what I would consider a real e-bike like class two right yeah. so uh something that feels like a normal bike but enhances your ride and uh lets you go further and faster um you know to one thing i might say on behalf of the hub driven bike if you are a more oblivious rider like i sometimes am and you forget to downshift you can still accelerate from a standstill without uh, overworking the motor yeah that's definitely true where on this one you've got to remember to shift on here as if you're riding a stick shift car because if you start off on the tiny cog there you risk blowing up the chain 
and uh, the gear ratio is not going to be good the motor is going to struggle you might strip out the motor cogs so you got to be a little bit more conscientious when you're using this bike so maybe this is for more advanced users someone who is maybe more more used to a, a mountain bike right a road bike more advanced and just more mechanically mindful more mechanically mindful this bike is just kind of just jump and go yeah the, the motor doesn't care what gear you're in it's right. just gonna go regardless Very and much use this like you would a conventional bicycle yeah cost wise on the other hand i want to say this bike's also cheaper to build because uh this motor is maybe 200 bucks um this bike build can be any bike this is just a hybrid bike a custom hybrid bike from my shop fusion workshop that i used to sell and uh, i used to sell this bike for 500 bucks so any any hybrid commuter will work a batch fitness bike a specialized cirrus any one of these bikes will work and um so cost price for the bike you're at 500 and then the motor is 200 battery is about 200 so that's six what like uh four that's like under a thousand bucks for a complete e-bike does that include the controller yeah yeah it includes all that display? you can get this motor with a controller display for like 250 on ebay not bad uh it's not bad at all um of course because i work at a bike shop and because you work at a bike shop you know this bike is made out of uh just leftover e-bike parts that we had laying around uh, as opposed to this bike where the build was a little more involved um you know i selected the frame the bike the battery the motor um we still have to solve the battery issues here i just i'm not a fan of how this bag thing looks here I think we could do a better job of maybe getting something more like this battery yeah, here. More rigid yeah. Now. yeah, something rigidly mounted on there. But I think would be better looking and sleek, kind of like this one. But yeah, so that that's kind of our thoughts on mid drive versus hub drive. Um, we're doing a beautiful ride out here before work uh, on this trail, Valley Road, over in uh, the South Bay. If you guys are familiar. Um, but yeah, hitting like. I don't know, 20 miles an hour. Not bad. How you doing, Zach? I'm just testing the throttle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's try the throttle. Well, so you were saying that... In my experience, it seems if you ride a throttle only, the power will limit. It'll cut off at 20 miles an hour. Gotcha. If you continue to pedal, though, not using throttle, just pedal assist, it will keep at least some level of power on you after 20. Cool. Great. Upcoming traffic. Yeah, this one doesn't do that at all. This one uh, just uh, just keeps going. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do another drag run when we get to that trail over there. Hey, hey, hey. I love this trail. So I'm getting some uh, some rotor rub and some new spoke clinking because the bike's brand new and I didn't uh, I didn't chew the wheels before building it. But where does that go? He's back there. Oh shit! Downhill, no hands. Ah! So advantage to mid drive. Uh, I made it up the hill with no effort because I could, you know, shift into a lower gear. Whereas Zach here. You had to use more human power to get up because, uh, you know, his bike's not a mid drive, his little motor capped out at some point. All right, we back from our ride. Uh, we're gonna check voltage. Zach was riding this bike, and this was 36 volt 10 amps. And we look at the display, he's got two bars left, so two, two bars of juice left. So we're gonna test the voltage and see what kind of voltage we actually have here. So if we probe this thing real quick, let's see, 36.9. So that's like nominal voltage. So the voltage is accurate on the display, which means this battery went 15 miles and drained halfway. So that's accurate. So now we'll test the voltage on the Tongsheng motor with the, uh, with the torque sensor and see how efficient this one if you was if you look at the display it's still got full bars it didn't even, it didn't ever even sack not even one bar so that is interesting so let's see what kind of juice this, this battery has if i had to guess i want to see it has like 50 volts 
48.7 that's actually about some there's some battery sag there so this display is not accurate this battery charges full to 54 and discharges down to like 45 46 and it's at 48 so I want to say the display is not accurate it says it has full battery that's not right you know mm. maybe the settings need to be adjusted there but either way both bi bikes went about 15 20 miles they did they did well